Welcome back for another episode of Super Fun Game Review Podcast Go. Find us on Facebook.com slash Super Fun Podcast, Twitter.com slash Super Fun Podcast, Patreon.com slash Super Fun Podcast, Instagram at Super Fun Podcast Go, iTunes at Super Fun Game Review Podcast Go. Thanks and enjoy the show. Welcome to another exciting episode of Super Fun Game Review Podcast. Go! I will be your host tonight, Clark. To my left, we have... Harry. And I had some problems installing this game. Steve. I shot first. And Ralph. I died a lot. And you, Clark, you're hosting. Yay! So tonight, our game is Battlefront for the PS4. I'm going to start with my initial thoughts. I didn't know much... About this game. I remembered hearing that they made a VR standalone mission on it. I don't know really anything about it. You didn't play it? I didn't. Oh, I'd hope that you did. Oh, sorry. Okay. Because it's free download, correct? If you own the game. I think so, yeah. I I had the option to do it, but I obviously didn't have VR. I know. I'm still going to check it out. Um, Now that I own the game, I, I, I have no reason not to. So I had an issue. This is a very specific glitch. But I bought the game, got it home, installed it, let it sit. I think I was playing another game, so the initial download took me about seven or eight hours. Oh, you you were playing about twelve hours of farming simulator. Yeah, one exactly. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> so the game finally downloaded, and then it was too late in the evening. I had to go to bed at that point. So the next day, I went back to try it, loaded up the game, started this. It's kind of like a you. You're invincible as Darth Vader, and you just keep killing rebel soldiers until uh, the game says it, it's fully fully downloaded at that point. And I was like, that that's kind of odd, because I already downloaded the game and, and installed all the, oh the patches and everything. Well, it downloads and then it installs. Yes, exactly. So I was playing that. I played it for about 15 minutes, and I'm like, well, how long is this going to be? And at that point, I was playing around with the menu. Is there any way I can just skip this or, or, or try to figure out something? Limited options, couldn't change anything, and finally the game just kind of crashes. Holy shit. It just stops after, I, I want to say, like 15 minutes. Could you fry an egg on your PlayStation? Tried it several times. Went over and over and over again. I kept running into the same issue. So I, I started searching on uh, Google, and I found that this was actually a pretty common issue that a lot of people were talking about. And so I deleted it and when i say i deleted it i um you know when it loads the disc on the playstation 4 and yeah. you see the different games i clicked yeah. on it hit the options button and then hit delete i didn't know that there was additional like saves or anything yeah all the other hidden. files yeah so i deleted it booted it back up or, or i had to let it install overnight again because i just didn't have enough time at that point now did you have enough room yeah no i had plenty system? of room okay. plenty of room that wasn't the issue. So I, I downloaded it again, or installed it again, rather. Had the same issue over and over again. I'm like, I, I don't know what to do. So I was really pissed off at this point. Texted, I think, the group chat. Like, if any of you guys had an idea, I guess you discovered online, I guess, the way to fix it where you have to delete the saves and everything yeah. like that. Did all that. Deleted everything. It's like a full uninstall. Yeah, full uninstall. Reinstalled it again, and then I was I was good to go. Oh, cool. Okay. But I lost so many days to actually play this game, going back and forth doing this, that it, it just really bummed me out, and it was kind of a time crunch towards the end there. Ball. So that was my initial, initial impression. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't involved at all. Started on the right foot, let me tell you. I remember seeing, of course, when the like trailers and... You know, they were shown gameplay came out, then the actual game came out, and they had it bundled with the PS4. I ended up making the mistake and getting the the Black Ops 3 bundle instead. Good choice. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. So when this was brought up, and then I saw it was on sale with the game and basically the season pass, all the DLC for 10 bucks, couldn't say no. Should have got it, damn. I was always excited because it always, anything I saw, it looked like more fast paced. That's kind of my kind of first person shooter. It was different. I, I mean, we'll get into like everything, but at least like just initially playing through, I like the fact that there's so many game modes. But yeah, we'll touch base on a little bit of everything. Uh, I got this game fairly early on when it when it was first released, and uh, 
it didn't have any of the additional, you know, I didn't get the season pass. I, I didn't play any of the DLC. At that point, there was no Jakku DLC. Like, that was a big thing. Like, Jakku was, like, about to happen, which, of course, is the planet from The Force Awakens. I didn't do anything with the, the Rogue One stuff that we got. Didn't, didn't download or play or install any of that. I put, like, 10 hours into the game initially on my own before we started the podcast around this time. Uh, I enjoyed it. I got to the point where I was actually pretty good with in terms of my kill-death ratio and learning where to be on which map and which scenario and all that. Uh, coming back to it this time, I gotta admit some of the levels and the modes were different and I, I really felt like I felt like the game had really moved on from where I was and I was way out of the loop trying to, to stick with it. And my initial impressions were that the game's gorgeous, it's frustrating to play but it's not to the point where you want to throw your controller and leave like I actually felt like a healthy amount of the challenge and I wanted to keep at it but that's just the nature of playing with playing online with other oh, human yeah. beings you know when you're not playing against the computer or, or the main story mission but I'm a fan of Battlefront I'm a fan of Star Wars games I have a lot of Star Wars games I've played a lot of Star Wars games I loved Battlefront for the PS2 uh, or that generation, and the second one, I really played a lot of time, or I put a lot of time into the second one with my friends, and enjoyed it, and really wished that there had been a Battlefront 3, or wanted to know what had been going on in the interim, I think Battlefront 2 came out in 2005, I think it was just about 10 years before we got this one, and in Dang. my opinion, that's yeah, too Yeah, that's long. about right. And uh, that was a third-person shooter, which was a lot of fun, and had some it had some unique elements to it. I mean, we'll get into my review, obviously, but this one, initial initially, it looks and sounds amazing. So I picked this game up when it was new. I got it digitally, and then when they had the Ultimate Edition on sale for like 10 bucks, I was like, it's cheaper than buying the Season Pass. So I wanted to check yeah. out all the new content, so I literally just bought it again. <laughs> I was like, fuck it, might, whatever. Might as well. Yeah, I didn't have to like download anything. I just downloaded all the DLC real quick. It was pretty cool. I had a lot of fun playing all the new DLC and stuff like that, and my initial impressions for the old game were that I was ready for a new battlef Battlefront game because I'm a, I'm a Battlefield fan as opposed to a Call of Duty fan, and I love Star Wars, so... You know, it, it initially just pulled me right into it. It was a happy marriage for you. Yes. Oh. And I, I, I loved the original Battlefront and Battlefront 2. Battlefront 2 is still one of my favorite multiplayer Hell yeah. games. It's amazing. I have it for Steam, actually. I do, or too. I have it on the PC. I do, too. We should play. Yeah, we should. Yeah. Oh, they're going to dock. <laughs> We're going to dock? Really? Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's that's pretty damn funny, actually. Okay. I'll give you that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad that tickled you, Ralph. All right, so Clark's gonna get me in his tractor beam. Oh yeah, he's gonna pull me into his cargo hold. <laughs> oh, this got about weird. all that. This got weird. So. It depends on who shoots first, really. <laughs> uh, yeah. So let's let's move on into game development. Game development. One thing I do know about this game is originally they had planned to do a Battlefront 3 two years after Battlefront 2 came out. It got scrapped, and the entire community for the game was like, where the fuck is our next... Where's our sequel? Yeah. yeah. We yeah. wanted a sequel. This is a sequel, but it's not at the same time. This game isn't the same caliber even on the level with what Battlefront 3 should have been yeah. compared to 2. There's a lot of like lackluster game modes and things like that, that that got developed in this weren't the same as the original Battlefront. Galactic Conquest? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, where the fuck is Galactic Conquest? I don't know. Or just, or like the hero battles where it was just like two teams of ten Jedi apiece all fighting in an arena. Oh, it was yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. It that, was so fucking that cool. That sounds like that'd be cool. It was badass. I used to play it online on my original Xbox all the fucking time. So I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of out of the loop on that. I'm not familiar with any of these Star Wars games you guys are talking about. No, you should probably I'm, go back to Battlefront 2. You might enjoy it. The yeah. last one that I played was Return of the Jedi for Super Nintendo. I have that one. Yeah. Super Return of the Jedi? Super Return of the Jedi. Nice, Sorry, nice. Jedi. No, 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 no. It's, it's, no. Actually, I think the best Star Wars game ever made is still Jedi Knight to Jedi Outcast. Or Jedi Outcast. Yes. Jedi Knight. I, now I've got it confused. It's Jedi Outcast. 
which is Jedi Knight 2. Yeah, that that game is fucking incredible. Yes. Do you ever play Jedi Academy? I did play Academy, and I felt that, you know, same engine, similar mechanics was fun, but just the story mode and the length of the game for the sequel way outshines Academy. Yeah. So, so essentially what we're trying to kind of, like, purvey here is, like, there were a bunch of really awesome games for the Star Wars franchise at the time when Battlefront 3 was supposed to come out, and this is what they originally intended for Battlefront 3. And it is just not the game. It's not living up. It's not uh, up to par. No, not with at the all. the rest of them. Not gotcha. At all. I played Star Wars Rogue Squadron on it's Nintendo a fun game. 64. That was a good game. It's a, that's a very fun game. That They're was actually that was ahead. like the first of like I know there was a couple out at that point, but like like dog fighting in the air. There, I don't think there was a lot of games up to that point that were like three dimensional. Ace Combat, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, I figured that. They're actually based on a series of books that are now like thrown to the wayside since they made. The new, the new Star Wars movies. Mm. Rogue Squadron is a book series, ah. and a lot of the plot from that game, I think, is carried from from several books. But yeah, Rogue Squadron for the N sixty four, absolute classic. Yeah, that, that was a fun game. Yes, definitely a fun. Game. They made sequels for the um, GameCube. I don't know if you've played those, but I have. One of them no. was a launch title for the Cube, and it's a gr it's a great game. I think <laughs> it's Rogue Squadron Two Rogue Leader, or the third one's Rogue Leader. I can't remember. I did play the Pod Racer game for a while too. Oh, oh yeah, God. I played I played Pod the Pod Racing game a lot too. Then yeah. when they had it in the Shadow arcade. of the Empire. <laughs> I never played that, and I always wanted to. That was I, like early N sixty four. I have it for the PC. My, yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. They included, I think, cutscenes with the uh, with the PC version. Yes, they did. Yeah. The Hoth battle from Shadows of the Empire basically became the blueprint for what Rogue Squadron was going to be. Yep. That's that's what Rogue Squadron was built on. And Shadows of the Empire is was also a book and a comic that George Lucas did in the. The mid '90s, before they started to do that, they did the um, special editions of the original trilogy, and then they moved into the prequels. Before they did that, they did Shadows of the Empire. And the book is different from the game, but it's it's a very interesting little nugget of, of Star Wars history. That's a great game. Dash Rendar. Dash Rendar, not Han Solo. Yep. In the not Millennium Falcon. It's in the Century Hawk. No, the Ebon Hawk. So I think we got a little off topic with game development. No, and that really? is KOTOR. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't. Even before you told me, Clark, and I'm glad you did the other day, you told me it was on the, the Battlefield engine, correct? Yeah, yep. It felt like a Battlefield game when I was playing it originally. Because wait, wait, let's when you're comparing like Call of Duty to Battlefield, there's definitely these glaring differences oh, yeah, between definitely. the two franchises. The I've games played feel Battlefield. different. They never do. Like yeah. it, like There's a different pace to yeah. them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like a different model size kind of thing. Like I feel like characters in Battlefield are smaller. Like your targets are smaller generally I would than agree. targets in Call of Duty. Yeah. Uh, that was the first thing that always... Well, also, Battlefield has bullet physics, whereas like Call of Duty, when you fire a bullet, it goes straight forever. Whereas... You know, Battlefield, Battlefront. Well, not Battlefront because they got away from that because they were using lasers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there's no pew, pew, pew. But yeah, there's there's gravity to each bullet that you fire. So like, if you're trying to hit somebody that is like behind something, you can kind of aim up a little bit, and you'll get a better chance to actually like skim the top of their head with a fucking bullet. Bullet drop. Yep, bullet drop. So, no, I, that that was something that like I definitely I felt that playing playing the game. So if I play a Battlefield game. I mean, like, oh, this is just like Battlefront, because I've never played a Battlefield game. It, yeah. Oh, I'm not going to say Similarly. it's just like it. There, there's yeah. similar feels to it. Similar. Okay, yeah. You can tell it's made by the same company. Yeah. It does kind of feel like Battlefield, but Star Wars. Yeah, and like... With some uh, tweaking. Yeah, exactly. And I played Battlefield 4 recently, and they they have, like, a dog fighting mode in that, and then there's one in this, and then there's, like, the rush mode, and there was, like, a similar rush mode in this... And just like it felt like a reskin is the way I was putting it the other day. Mm. Is this similar to Battlefield One then? I don't know the older ones. I know like no, Battlefield Battlefield three, One. No, just Battlefield came. One is the most recent one. Oh, I'm it's sorry. You're right. You're right. You're right. No, no, it, no. It's, it's it, it right. does feel a bit different than that. Cool. Felt like Battle Battlefield Three or Battlefield Four. Like I could. Go yeah, Battlefield way. Four and this because they are the exact same engine. Okay. Uh, Battlefield One got a new. Like overhaul. Oh, okay, okay. Though if they did have pigeons in Battlefront, it might have been a little better. Okay. But yeah, EA did it. There we go. We didn't say EA that. did EA. it. EA. All right, let's move into story. Story. 
A long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Gameplay. Maybe we should skim over a couple of the more notable game modes. Um, the one I really liked, which is similar to Rush Mode in Battlefield, was the one where you have the uh, the AT walkers. Right. The at at. Yeah, the at at <laughs> at 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 at. And it's basically you're you're trying to prevent the the rebel side. You're trying to upload links on your satellite so you can get more bombers in. Right. Yeah. Or if you're on the um, Imperial side, you're trying to basically stop them from up uploading. Linking. Yeah, from linking. I thought that was a really cool mode. I, I re really thought it was awesome, and, and because it's a a 40-player match, it felt like a war. Oh, it yeah. really did. Yeah. It was pretty and, crazy. And, like, I've gotten to the point when it comes to, like, kind of like the, your battlefield-type shooting games, I want it to feel like a war. I don't like the smaller modes so much when it's, like, 5v5 or, or even 10v10. Like, I like it to be fucking chaotic. You like it massive. It just so chaotic, and it just feels like a fucking war. Like that. That when it comes to games like this, that's that's what I like. So that that, that was my favorite mode personally in this game. I did enjoy the aerial combat, where there was a game mode. Uh, what exactly they call it was a squadron. There was a, a separate mode just for aerial. Yeah. 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 You could get into all the different game modes. Huh. Okay. Because the only thing I knew was like the big. 40 player modes where you could get into a ship and then fly around a little bit and if you're good enough you can survive maybe 30 seconds oh yeah dude I got normal. shot the fuck out of the sky every <laughs> single time like nothing yeah. yeah it's like even before you get control of the vehicle it's just doing that initial just bringing you onto the screen and <laughs> well the game's coming up on being almost two years old so there's like there's people that are still playing this that are just like really fucking they know good at yeah. all the nuances yeah. just they probably know masters. all the spawn points for exactly. the vehicles exactly yeah. exactly mm. I mean, when you start playing a first-person shooter that much, and that becomes your favorite one, yeah, that's exactly what happens. Right. You know I me. Mean? I got I got sucked in real deep. At one point, I was in one of those modes with the. I don't actually think it was the the Walker Assault. I think it was it was a different mode, but we had been pushed back to a certain spawn point, and you could tell because it was in like a valley. This was the. Um, I don't think it's Tatooine. There's another like sand crawler like level. I started spawning, or I spawned multiple times, and there were stormtroopers who were just up on the mountains, just pointing down, just mowing people down, because they knew exactly oh God. the spawn point for that. And it makes sense that after two years, you would know all right. those. And that's like any game, I guess. But it was to the point where I was like, wow, I feel really, really out of the loop with this game. Like, everybody <laughs> is a master at this point. That's the one thing that they didn't pull from the Battlefield games that they should have. In Battlefield, they offset your spawn points so that you will you can only stand there for 10 seconds if you're an enemy and then you die. Mm -hmm. So they offset it so you have a little bit of ways to run before you're really in like active Battlefield. That's something that they should have pulled over. It's a over smart to way game. to protect against spawn killing. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. Everybody fucking hates being spawn killed. Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. the worst, worst feeling possible. Yeah. They could have protected this game a little more by utilizing that tactic. Well... It's too late now. We got a new game on the horizon. You know? Yeah, they're they, definitely gonna do it there. They've walked away from this game. I, pray they, I I don't know if they will address that. Hopefully they do. It was a big complaint when the game came out. My favorite mode is the heroes mode. I like all the different heroes modes. When we were playing last night, though, you guys didn't like the one mode where we just couldn't kill fucking Leia. <laughs> oh God, yeah, that was no fun. That was the uh, that's zero the hero fun. hunt. So so on that map, it's awful because not everyone can sit and attack at the same time that's how you get through that you have to everyone has to attack her at the same time so that's why i was like sitting waiting for like somebody else to like come up and it was just always like one person would just run up and go yep one person would just run up and go but i i used to play that mode a little bit and it is relatively easy to like just go zero to 50. I like, I, I just like messing around with the heroes. I think the heroes are the most interesting part of the game in general. It is pretty neat, but I mean, where there's the one where it's uh, heroes versus heroes, and then you have where you might just be a rebel soldier, where they, it's split. Half the team are heroes, half the team are backup meat shields. I, I would have liked one where it's, I mean, I understand you only have so many people to choose from, but if there's six, at least have where you can just have a whole team of heroes. Yeah. If everybody has all the content, you have six people to choose from, 
everybody be a fucking hero. Well, they had that in Battlefront 2. Yeah, no, that's something I want in this one. It's, I never played Battlefront 2. I, I, it's my money, and I need it now. <laughs> so su supposedly they are going to put that in Battlefront 2. The, the one coming out, Battlefront 2. The the new number 2. The new the number new 2. two. New, yeah. new, new, new 2. New 2. New 2. Love that fucking movie. I don't know what it is about the heroes, but for this game, I, I, I never really liked them. Recently, I, I played as Boba Fett for a while, and that was fun until I got cut in half by Luke Skywalker. <laughs> so I think, and and playing more recently, I found that there are alternate DLC heroes like the Bounty Hunters, which to yeah. me is really awesome because I'm a fan of like the Bounty Hunters in Star Wars, and I Bosk. read uh, like like B Bosk, but me, I like Dengar. So I, I was playing in a match once, and I was just following Dengar. I was like, this is like surreal, like this character that I've seen in a movie, but he doesn't really do anything, and I've read books about him. There he is in this game, and obviously being controlled by uh, another human, but it was, it was fun just to, to have that context for this character and see it in a game, because I don't think he's in any other games that I can think of. Like um, IG-88 is in, and Boba Fett are in Shadows of the Empire, but right. Dengar's not. So I thought that was really cool, and... and I remember now that I'm thinking on it, I saw a video where they did like a walk around of the EA studio where they were, were doing Battlefront, like promotional, in development, like concept art and all that. And I did get the sense that these were Star Wars fans who were on this game and you could sort of feel that that was there. To me, the fact that all the bounty hunters are there as DLC and you can play as Dengar is, that's not corporate EA. That's someone who actually gives a shit and they said, this would be so cool if we could do this. Here you go. Here it yeah, is. Yeah, ab uh, no, ab absolutely. This this game is made with a lot of love from a company that typically does not show that kind of thing. With missteps. Yeah, a absolute missteps. But that's uh, I think it's a learning experience. And it was a it was a success enough that they're making another one. So yeah. hopefully they've learned and kind of went back to the trolling board and realized what the old Battlefront 2 could do to make the new Battlefront 2 more successful. You know, like cutting down on the loading time. Oh shit, he went there! So I'm actually going to transition from there. kind of wanted to talk about the fact that this game is first person, and the other ones were third. Mostly, so we can go into mostly first well, yeah, person. Well, yeah, for the heroes and stuff, but I, I like that's a that's a change up to me anyway. But no, go you ahead. Can you, you can switch. I never play first person. You never play first person in this game? No. He's even flying the like I did see flying the, the the ships. You can go first person or third person on the ships as well. Yeah, you can do you can do both. You know, I must have tried it, but I didn't like the way it felt, so I just never went back to it for the third huh. person. I don't know how to switch it up though. Was it like clicking one of the? Uh, just directional pad. Directional pad left. It Maybe it just didn't feel the, the same to me. I don't know, but I I well, think of it as a first person game. Sorry, except for the planes, that yeah. was your power roll. Except for the heroes and the ships, obviously. No, I guess while we were talking about the different modes, what was the, the dog fighting mode? Squadron. 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 I did find every match that I did play, it wasn't a fair fight. And I don't mean like... Like, there, there was one match I got in, there was ten players on one team and two on the other. What? That, that, that was just oh. a, a thing at one point. And they obviously got demolished. Should have called your squad buddies. And thank God I was on the dead man team. <laughs> I made a Good lot for more you. I, I didn't die a single time that match. Oh, Good job, oh, Harry. I thought, uh, I thought for sure you'd be on the other team, but okay. Um, but a lot of them, like, I got creamed. Like, I never saw, like, a close score. It was always one team dominated, one team got fucked. I was even playing one earlier today, and it was probably about, like, 20-point gap between the the winning team, my, my team, and the other team. It was only, like, 20 points. It wasn't, like, really too far. Okay. All right. Well, maybe it was just my experience. Maybe. I mean, but that that's a crazy long mode, too, like, for one of the games. I, I, Is it? I found that with a lot of, like, some of them. Like, they are, there's some, like, long play times in some of these matches. It's not like or a quick hop like in it. for five minutes and you're done. Yeah, that's true. They're, that's they're, true. They're, yeah. They really get you, I guess, invested in each round. So, like, you're in it for the long haul. Mm -hmm. It's not just a quick boom, 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 and round's over. It's yeah. like... No, you're working towards this goal that's going to take you 15 to 20 minutes, more or less. Yeah. Like, I know some of them do have the timer on it, and whoever's, you know, ahead by the time the time runs out wins, but it feels like, I don't know, the time didn't pass as fast as it usually feels like. Mm. But yeah, I mean, at least the loading screens. I get it. When you have, like, a 20 on 20, there's a lot of shit that needs to get all hooked up to 
all play at the same time. But even like the the twelve player modes, it still felt like it took a while to load just even for that. Too long. Yeah, I, I really feel that of of this generation, these are the worst loading times that I, in a game that I've come across. Yeah, I because I think we all each separately said something or like came to that conclusion on our own. Like we didn't get a general consent. I don't know. I had that idea about the loading times before anybody said anything. I was like, this this is absurd. Well, if, like, it, if it, everybody it thinks is. that individually, you you know, there's an issue with the with the loading times. Yeah, well you you had an issue with loading right off the bat. So <laughs> yeah, I had an issue with yeah. stalling. You're, you're, <laughs> you're already a little biased. Double loader. Yeah. So about the loading times though, I really think it has to do with the graphics. Demanding, sure. Yes. It, it's one of the most demanding games for uh, graphically. I don't, I don't know if I can support that. You don't I mean, think it's one of the most gorgeous games this generation? It looks really really nice. But I'm just going to disagree with that. That's just me. Not disagree where the graphics look great, but at least when it comes into the loading time. Okay. I don't think it's one of the best looking huh? games of this generation. Shooters. Maybe, maybe it was when it came out. This game looks like Uncharted, graphic level wise, but it's rendering 40 people into a battlefield and there's explosions that look very, like, very real and very good and like things like that. I really think it has to do with like the processing power of loading all of that in. How they defended that, because it was a huge criticism when the, when the game came out. Yeah. And how they defended that was like, look, we have to load in the entire level before we can put people in it. Like, we have to render the entire thing and have it sit there loaded and then start rendering people into it. That's why the load times were so long. Yeah. Apparently, they fixed that for the second one. It's EA, though. They could be just fucking lying. But that's like that was their thing. Like, it was an issue of... They didn't know how to do this because this was their first big shooter on PS4, even other than uh, Battlefield 4. And Battlefield 4, right when that came out, had stupid long load times, too. Yeah, I mean, at least one thing. It's a fault of the engine, really. Where I, I complain about the long load time, but at least to be able to have a 40 man battle and I can't remember skipping, at least like where you're running and then it jumps a little bit. Oh, so, no, I think it, it performs very so well. So, yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, I, I get that where it's going to take a while, but I know where it's coming from. We might be a little spoiled, honestly, because uh, loading, times, loading times, you know, 10 years ago, this probably isn't that bad, but we've become spoiled with technology that oh. we expect it to be faster than it is now. Absolutely. I mean, they could also do, there's, there's things called the user entertainment. We play a Star Wars version of Pong while it's loading. No, I mean, like, they could have done more with the loading screen to make it less agonizing. Because you're just staring just, at, like, a hysteric. white fucking screen, and then it just has, like, one dude on it, and it's like... Mm. A static shot of R2-D2 not moving, and it's just a spinning wheel. Right, yeah. yeah. yeah like, I work in, in software development, and we figured out that people used to complain a lot when we didn't put a loading bar. And we made a process slower and put the loading bar on it, nobody, compla nobody yeah. complained about it because oh, yeah. they could see the progress. Like, it was just this weird thing. It's like, okay, this is actually going to take almost doubly as long. One of our processes went doubly? from ten, 10 seconds to 20 seconds, and we put up a fucking loading bar, and no one complained about it. I'm kind of curious to know how long these load times are now. I want to, like, crack out the stopwatch. Let's see. I think it's still less than two minutes, but still, yeah. that's, that's rough. That's getting back yeah. to... To it's agonizing. PS2 era load times. Yeah. So do we want to talk about like do we want to actually get into the graphics then? Move oh on no no. Uh, I think one other thing we should talk about is like it's similar to like Battlefield. Like you don't really have like roles, but you can up like upgrade your gadgets and equip yourself. Oh, to, your cards. To, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. To, yeah. to customize yep. yourself. Oh, yeah. Which I I always like that. It's like. What, what do I want to save up to to kind of achieve for my character or something? Like it gives you a goal to keep keep uh, progressing. Oh, credits are like renowned. Gives you yes. something else. Yeah. Mm. There's mm. cool with like the job of the hut contracts as well. Did you I didn't see do those? any with that. I saw that it was there, but I didn't buy into it. So what is that? How's so that like work? you have to buy the contract, and it gives you an objective. And if you can complete the objective in 24 hours, it'll give you the item that you're trying to get from ooh, the contract. Ooh, ooh, but if you don't, ooh, you can wait. You can easily waste like three to four thousand credits, which is wow. which is like five to ten games worth so like Wonka it's like a, it, you're betting on yourself so you can see what the objective is 
and what you'll earn out of the objective because it'll usually be like all right so you get like a credit refund a little bit and most of the time it was for like a weapon yeah or or cards that you could use that's the one thing i did not like about the gameplay is the cards that disintegrate i don't like those oh the disintegrating the center center guys yeah the center ones that they're one time use you use them and they're gone from your inventory you, can't you, like, you can them. pick them up on the map though Yes, you can pick them up on the map or you can recharge them, but once you use them once in a match, it's it's gone from your inventory, which I thought was kind of annoying. I pretty much stuck to just the jetpack and thermal detonator for my deck. I did have the long range like uh, sniper shot, but I could never never really land a shot on anybody with it, so I said, forget it, thermal detonator. I almost mm -hmm. killed Boba Fett last night with it, and then I got fucking nice. murked, Sh struck down by Vader. <laughs> struck down. I found that the like the homing rockets were... Oh yeah, where it was at. Yeah, they're they're pretty key. It's the amount of times I shot somebody down out of the sky, or they do a lot of damage. Like when you lower the shields on the AT walkers, yep. just oh yeah, to have something good. to fire at it. Multi use there, or even like shooting down turrets, or I don't know. I had a lot of options with it, and it, it, instead of just going around shooting lasers, it gave me options. Gave you rockets. Yeah, rockets. got the rockets. Was so, it red? Red rocket. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! I went there. Wow. Whoa! Red rocket. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope. You said yum. <laughs> yeah. Twenty points, Ralph. <laughs> Environments. I I played on Hoth. It seemed a lot, and I played one round in um the moon. Endor. Endor. Thank you. There are key, there are definite advantages for certain teams and certain terrain. Like Hoth, the Imperials have the advantage, just yep. from camouflage. And the opposite is true on Endor. If you were a stormtrooper running through the forest, you were boned. And if you were a rebel, who is almost always wearing camo, you're doing the boning. Not always, but different colors. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're boning. I I feel like I played on Hoth like. 90% of my matches. Oh, maybe that's exaggerating a, a little bit, but... Maybe? I so fe felt like I was always playing there. It also depends on the game mode. Because I think the game only has four maps. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. so so the game... By well, default. without DLC, it has four maps. And each of those maps have different game modes on them. So okay. it's like, here's the Hoth Rush type game. Yeah. Here's the Hoth hero type game which is also the here which is also that that same map is used for this yeah. but it's like different sections different sections yeah yeah and that's like that also ties into the loading thing because they would load the entire they would have to render the entire map so it's not just the map that you're actually playing on it's like oh over this field is like where everyone for the heroes is playing would play they would load the whole fucking thing weird yeah, why would I, they do that? It was, I, a, it was a bad idea. The load yeah. times actually used to be worse. They cut down on it a little bit in patches. I will say that playing the game essentially vanilla when it was new, I guess, Clark, you you familiar yeah. with this? It, it, it was, that was exacerbated. It was like... Uh, what, what's the, the, what's the I one think place with the lava flow? Yeah, is that, is that Mustafar or is it a different... I think it's it Mustafar. Different? I'm not sure. But, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think it, it could be. That one I really enjoyed... Early on, but yeah, you would just rotate between Tatooine, Endor, Hoth, and Mustafar. Like those four, you were just constantly rotating, and that yeah. was it. I, I got kind of sick of seeing the same environments. And like I said, yeah. I didn't play this game a lot. Yeah. It just if I get sick of it in that short of a time frame, that's it's a little bit of an issue. Where's the longevity know. for it? Can you tell me, Clark, the um the Twilight stuff or the post post like battle? Like, cause I did I did one on Hoth, which was like the Twilight battle, like. And I was like, wait a minute, what? It wasn't the middle of the day, like the Battle of Hoth. It was like dusk. Oh, yeah. There were like, they would render a different time of day for certain battles. Okay. And there was one that was the Endor Moon, like after the Death Star had right. blown up, right. which was a little bit different. Not, yeah. not a whole lot different, but a little different. Yeah, there's, there's certain stuff. I still think my favorite was um, from Rogue One. The the map from I Rogue played One. That one, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you can put like once you download the the season pass stuff, you can play like oh I just want to play new maps. Yeah. And just do that stuff for and, specific packages. Yeah, I forget what the name of the Rogue One planet is. It's like that shield generate. Did you see Rogue One? 
No. It's where they store all the data for the Empire. So Scarif uh, is probably my favorite level. It's really awesome because it's kind of like a beachfront, and then it goes into the woods a little bit. Oh, so you get a, a little bit of different environments. Yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. All right, and let's go into graphics. Graphics. So, okay. Graphically, I will say, it, it was a nice-looking game. I mean, the environments were big. They're very large. Yeah. I wasn't blown away, though. I, I mean, it was good. I just... Like, there are certain games I pop in, and you get that feeling of just like, holy shit. Oh, like, yeah, absolutely. I, I you didn't get your didn't, holy shit moment. I didn't have that moment. No. I mean, it still, again, still looked nice. It did. No, no, no. I'm not I'm not going to trash it in, in any mean. It just it just wasn't top tier for me. No. I mean, some of the explosions um, really, I don't know, they look really clean. Well, clean for an explosion anyway. Right. Uh, the squadron mode. Uh, you like as soon as you blew up a you know another fighter, it started fragmenting in the air and just dropping to the ground. So it's you know you're able to follow it down kind of for a good little bit. But yeah, no, I think uh, overall amongst everything else we talked about graphically, I mean it's it's still good. So it was it was kind of worth the loading times. I think the graphics are really well done, especially for the time because this is only that would only be a year and a half. Or almost two years into the PS4 cycle, which is hard because we're still on the PS4 thing, so we can't start to objectify yeah. really like what the greatest graphics from it were. Yeah, exactly. So that makes it a little tough. Also, I am fully aware as somebody who loves Star Wars, I like the graphics a little more because those environments and stuff are like exact to what those planets are, and I think that's why I like them so much. Yeah. In the PC version there's a bunch of mods it takes about 15 minutes to load a map but i will show you pictures of it and i suggest to everybody to like go out and try to find these pictures it's ridiculous people took stills of it and you can ramp up the graphics so much on the pc that it looks like still frames from the movie oh i bet no especially if you're going on pc and people who do the modding and like really kick up you can it's do that for like a fun. lot of the games no no dude i have never seen graphics like this it is the single most incredible fucking thing i've ever seen mm. it's it's nuts it literally looks like a, a just a screenshot from the movie post-production gotcha so like all done up high res it's nuts it's really fucking crazy it's cashews we realized also we did talk about graphics a lot in the gameplay <laughs> hey guys let's talk about notes <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, let's uh, let's hop into the music. Uh, Travel call. Ralph, go ahead and do your music minute. Music. Ba Ralph's music, music minute. minute. Ba -da -da. <laughs> so Ralph's music minutes. Ba -da -da. My music minute. I'm eating a banana. So Star Wars, John Williams, done. That's very, very well known and understood that he composed all the Star Wars films and his music is excellent. Almost every movie that he has done, you will recognize and know that it's him and you probably know the theme. Like E.T. or Jaws or Indiana Jones, all the Star Wars stuff. All Well, the first three Harry Potters, but the Harry Potter theme, like it's all John Williams. The man's a legend. The man is brilliant. <laughs> he's also getting up there. He's almost 90 years old and he's doing music. He did the music for The Force Awakens and he's doing it for uh, The Last Jedi. So he's still in it. Now, having said that, he did not compose most of the music for this game. They had a different composer whose name is Gordy Hobb, who essentially took the same like leitmotifs and themes and instrumentation and made a lot of music that sounds like John Williams made it, but he didn't. So it's almost like an homage to him to try to keep... Obviously, they here's John Williams' music using an entire symphony. They wanted to bring somebody else in to make music that fit and sounded comparable, and I think it was well done. A lot of times when listening to the, to the music in the game, when you're specifically in the menus or in the loading screen, you'll hear some of John Williams' music that you recognize, and then you'll hear something different. But it sounds like the same guy did it. And oftentimes I found that it sounds like other works that John Williams has done. 
Some of the, ter the tracks sound like things from uh, the movie Hook, which Spielberg did. I'm pretty sure John Williams did the score for it. You guys see Hook? Yeah. Yeah. It's been a long time. Rufio! Rufio! <laughs> Go -go! You can um, fly. You can fight. Bang can the ram. <laughs> got, got to save Maggie. Got to save Jack. Hooky's back. <laughs> Let's not talk about Hook. I can quote half the movie. But E.T., you know, a couple, a couple of his better known works. It feels like a very successful homage to John Williams when I when I boot the game up and listen to it. Having said that, all of the sound effects except for the except for the hero's voice acting sounds great. I think this game's a triumph musically and for sound design. Chewy. It looks and sounds great. Yeah, my Chewy opinion. Sounded like Chewie. No, no, I, I okay. So I have this thing when it comes to Star Wars games because they have a lot of voice talent that attempts to sound like the actors from the films, and sometimes it's pretty decent, and sometimes it just doesn't work. Like, you know, oh, there's Han Solo, he's like, come on, let's get over this hell. It's some dude trying to sound like Harrison Ford, and it's not Harrison Ford. And or it sounds Vader. like John Wayne. <laughs> I mean, because the, the voices and the actors are so well-known, it's difficult to try. I mean, I wouldn't even want to be in that position. I'm going to be like, okay, we, you're going to be the voice of Vader now. Well, fuck that. I don't sound anything like um, James, James Earl, Earl Jones. Jones. Thank you, James Earl Jones. <laughs> I don't sound anything like James Earl Jones. And when when Vader comes flying by and he like says a, a quib or something and it's not him, you know. Like, to me, it's it's like cheap. It's yeah. a it, it's a cheap version. Like, uh, uh, Princess be, Leia does not sound like Carrie Fisher. They should have used a fan. Now, come that, to think and of then it, you can really sound like Darth Vader. Come to think of it, Boba Fett sounded a lot like the actor who played Jango Fett, and ha they redubbed him for the like special editions of the original trilogy. I forget his name. Uh, I think he's New Zealand. He's from New Zealand. Boba Fett sounded right, but everybody else, they're just knockoffs, not authentic. Not authentic enough for me and my perfect ears. They know the difference. Now, I know you were mentioning the music and, and ha how they use like the, the old scores that they use from the from the movies. There, there is. There's some John Williams in there, and there's new stuff. Yeah. That, that, that music is such a staple of the franchise at this point. I can't imagine a, a Star Wars uh, product having an original score at this point. Like, completely original. No, it, no, no, it, I got you. It, I mean, it's just so ingrained in the Star Wars feel... I don't think they can escape using the original music at this point. No, you're right. And a lot of Star Wars games use the same music. Now, stepping away from the music, um, sound effects real quick. Yeah. I think that was an important feature they needed to nail for the Star Wars universe. That lightsaber sound mm -hmm. is very iconic. I know we say iconic all the time, but... It is. I don't have a better word to it's describe. It's very heronic, um, clarkonic, steronic. The, the, That's the best one. The laser sounds when you're shooting shooting the guns, I feel like that was another sound effect that they needed to nail. It doesn't sound like a 44 Magnum. It um, sounds like blaster fire. And I think they did a very good job at, at achieving that those sound effects for this game. Especially the lightsabers. I mean, oh, that, yeah. that one, if they fucked up, might as well not even release the, the game. Vehicles, yep. The vehicles, the AT-AT, like walking, and like yeah. the sound effect that it makes when it Puts a puts a foot down, yeah. It's a triumph in terms of sound design, in my opinion. Oh, the, the, I didn't even mention the um, like the the the, the Tie Fighters, yep. the, like the sounds that they make, the X Wing, like uh, the sounds they make are like very like background noise, but very important to the feel for the immersion. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. One other thing, I guess, with um, specifically Walker Assault, when it's time to attack the Walker, there's a music cue that oh, kicks yeah. in, and it it really helps to, without a visual representation, let you know that the game right now is different. It, it Something has shifted, it's changed, and you should be doing something else. And I can't remember what piece of music it is now, but it's very, it's very suiting to the scenario. It fits well. I think the sound design is, is really good for the sound effects and things like that. They, they, Gush alert! They hit the key sound effects that they absolutely need to. The voice acting is not the greatest. And the the music sounds like Star Wars to me. I was okay with it. Star Wars music is historically great. The like, orchestral overtones and things like that. 
All right, let's move into final thoughts. Final thoughts. I want to say that all, almost all the time that I spent with this game, I enjoyed it. I, I, see, I see some faults, I see some flaws. I'm willing to forgive several of them, but, you know, things at the loading times, like, just not, not really. I'm disappointed. I'm also, and I haven't touched on this because we essentially skipped story, <clears throat> there was no single-player story mode, which is a big detriment, in my opinion. Now, I, historically, Battlefront 1 and 2 didn't really have a main single-player story mode, but... They had you know, a more, more of a campaign than this. They did have more of a campaign, essentially a timeline run, where you start in the beginning and, and yep. move through the franchise. You know, that was something to follow, something to something to play and enjoy when you didn't have a lot of friends. <laughs> <laughs> over at that point. When you didn't have a lot of friends over. <laughs> so Yeah, Ralph. If you're just playing solo, you know, you, you, it's, yeah. not, it's not really fun to solo. Anyway. All by myself. <laughs> Don't wanna be no. Yeah, like really to me, this this game is like it's missing a piece of the pie. It's missing a third. And one third of this should have been a single a single player campaign. That's that's kinda how I feel on it. Other than that, those other two thirds, they're pretty damn good. It's enjoyable. I'm glad I bought the game. I'm I'm glad I have it. I'm gonna play it more. Harry, final thoughts. So I like the Battlefield game, so that was the first thing that caught my eye playing this game. Like, I do like that big battlefield presence. Although, I will say my initial impressions, and I know I shouldn't hold this against the game, but initial impressions are everything when it, when it comes to um, making your presence known in, like, the workplace or something like that. That initial loading or, or ins installation was a pain in the ass. <laughs> I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. Boo! Boo earns. Boo I was earns. saying <laughs> boo earns. <laughs> no, so I'm I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. I'm not. D don't mistake me. I I don't hate Star Wars. I I do enjoy the movies, the original three. That's fine. That's fair. You don't like the prequels? I, Get out of here. Did not care. No, the, for the prequels. Pre I'm suck. kidding. I feel like this game is specifically targeted at people who like Battlefield, but are also a huge Star Wars fan. Wouldn't have guessed. Absolutely. And, and I feel like hmm. if you don't like, if there's one of the two that you don't care for as much, you're not going to be as invested in this game, personally. And I did find myself, after about 10 hours of gameplay, starting to get a little bored with the game, mm -hmm. to be completely honest with you. Now, don't get me wrong. I think playing with you guys last night was a whole different ballpark. I, I think it was like playing by yourself it gets a little repetitive and boring after a while. I think it, you need to bring your friends in to play this game to add a new uh, dynamic yeah. to, to the gameplay. Yeah. So that, that's essentially my final thoughts on the game. Mr. Steve. I'm going to agree with, with both of you fine gentlemen. Number one, Ralph, the one thing that I, as soon as I loaded up the game I wanted to do, what I do with every first-person shooter, is play the campaign. And then I go do multiplayer. Right. There was no campaign. So I was a little disappointed at that. But it's like, all right, it's basically meant to be a multiplayer. So we'll just go with that. I know that. for a fact that's not the first thing that you do when you load up a shooter. You invert the access. Because you're a monster. Ooh. This is true. <laughs> he is. He's a freak <laughs> of nature. Yeah, you I do. Inverter. <laughs> he's an inverter. Look, he's an inverter. What game set you off on that originally? What game was it? <laughs> um, well, <laughs> actually, <What> game. <laughs> it's probably back from Goldeneye sixty four. I'm trying to remember. There was um, Wolfenstein three D. No, it's a uh, an airplane game for Super Nintendo, where you it's basically a fighter jet game, and it's inverted right from there. And I think that was some of the first. Like, I have no idea what it was called. I, I've been trying to remember what it is. Yeah, so you really started playing hardcore a... But that's with a D-pad. Doesn't matter. Yeah, they have it but, the way a plane goes, and uh, that's uh, just uh, how I learned. Yeah, airplane controls. Uh, Which, uh, ironically, uh, when you started playing as any of the actual air vehicles in this game, it started out where you're just like, down is down, up is up. It wasn't airplane control. Yeah. So I had to go and switch the Y axis. So the again. inversion was inverted. Correct. Yeah, all right, I know. I'm freaking nature. Yeah, I'm freaking sorry. nature. I'm sorry. It's... That's all right. You got backward thumbs. 
Yeah, but my kill death ratio shows that it it works for me. Not in this game. <laughs> I killed that. <laughs> Point three. <laughs> and then just not being in a party and playing online. You know, it was still all right, but like when we all got together last night, that really just made a different kind of game for me. So I guess I enjoyed that more. Like this is something where I would rather have friends to be playing with instead of just doing it myself. Oh, I'm weeping now. All the penetration. But also I'm with Harry where I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. You know, again, I like the movies. You know, it's something I grew up with. But, I mean, episode one was the best one ever, right? Right, right. See, that's a joke. I Boo earns them, Ralph. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Boo. Earn. I might play some more, but it's not really something that's I see in a regular rotation. So... I will say this as somebody who loves Star Wars, loved the previous battlefields, loved the previous battlefronts. This game is not what I wanted out of the next iteration of Battlefront. It's good and the base is there. What's important to me seeing this is that I really think Battlefront 2 is going to be very promising. If they fix just like have a have a few more interesting game modes, have a few more maps, you know, cut down on the load times, have a few more characters, get kind of back towards there were vehicles on the field in Battlefront 2 and stuff like that. And, like, that's something that they strayed away from. That, ground vehicles. That, yeah, like little ground vehicles. There were tanks. There were things like that. If they get back to there, I think Battlefront 2 is going to be very promising. I plan on picking it up day one, probably. But this, it just falls short to me to give it an incredible place in my in my heart. I I had suggested this game. This was a game that I brought to the table because I just wanted to see what everyone's views were on the game the game itself. I think we all agree that it falls short somewhere. You know, whether it be the install or, you know, just like it gets boring or no First single person. player. It falls apart <laughs> somewhere in all of this. That's that's just my final thoughts. So let's uh, let's go ahead and tie fight our way into the <laughs> into the score. Oh, all right, all right, guys, all right, all right. Is this better? Let's force push our way into. Yeah. Let's force push our way into the score. The score. Ralph, score, go. 75%? What about you, Steve? I'm going to give it a C. I mean, it's music's good, graphics look good, but the gameplay for me is just eh. What about you, Harry? I think I'm going to give it a 6.5. And I don't have my chart in front of me, I, so I can't tell you what it's above or below. That's totally fair. It will I'm sure it'll be updated on our chart. You know it. All I'm going to say is the force is not strong with this one. Yeah, you're right. Ooh. Damn. That's a good way to grade it, though. I like it. That's my that's my arbitrary grade. But he this. has the force. In his pants. It's just not strong. This game's force-sensitive. It's not really like a Jedi or a Sith. It has a small midichlorian count. And a <laughs> <laughs> number of midichlorians. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's going to wrap up our Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront review here or battlefield star wars all right so our next game is going to be beautiful katamari for the xbox 360 it's so beautiful be a beautiful mess handling a lot of balls it's the most beautiful thing i've ever seen as long as they're not hairy we're good i'm gonna I'm be putting my balls on everything i'm gonna <laughs> go over to that person's yard and put my balls over there <laughs> and i'm gonna go in the grocery store and put my balls in there Oh, is that a cat? My balls are on it. Oh, a school of little children. Put my balls in there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, wait. No, that's in the game. <laughs> Cut that shit. <laughs> I'm excited to touch a moon with my balls. <laughs> <laughs> my balls are going to stay in my pants, but I'll enjoy the game. Whoa. Wow. Jesus. Whoa. Wow. I was You're not going to be able to beat the game. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can I use <laughs> just keep them in pants? Can I use cubes? I'm going to use cubes. Do they have to be balls? Yeah, it's a ball. Yeah. What's a ball? The thing that the Katamari pushes around. What's a Katamari? The Katamari is the ball. Well, you make you make a Katamari out of the ball. You'll see. Okay. You'll What's see. a little guy called? Brother. 
or sister? Father? Cousin. With the cylindrical head. They're called Jimmy Jams. I thought that was his dad. Like Jimmy the, Jams. Jimmy Jams? And King Cosmos is no one's dad. It's like Zeus. He's just King he Cosmos. Is. is there story for this game? There's a yes. little bit of story. There, there is story for the bit. game. Yeah. Is there music in this game? Yes. Yes. I hope you like K-pop. Save the pandas. <laughs> is that how we trail off with the episode? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Da, da, da. Thanks for listening to Super Fun Game Review Podcast Go. Stay up to date on our Facebook at facebook.com slash superfunpodcast.